Ecclesiastes chapter number 1 tonight. We're going to read several verses of Scripture in these first couple of chapters and then throughout the course of the message we'll walk through several chapters of Ecclesiastes and then a little bit we'll hit something in the New Testament to try and sum up what we'll be preaching on tonight. There's a phrase that Solomon uses throughout the 12 chapters of the book of Ecclesiastes. He uses it 29 times throughout the book of Ecclesiastes. I would say that if a man uses a phrase 29 times throughout 12 chapters, that's got to be a theme or a pattern that he's trying to get across to us that we should not miss. If the Holy Ghost is spoon-feeding us a phrase 29 times in 12 chapters, he wants us to catch it. He doesn't want us to miss it. And Solomon says this over and over and over, and I want you to see it as well. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse number 1, Solomon said, The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem, Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher, Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Verse 3, What profit hath a man of all his labor which he taketh? Here's the phrase, watch these three words, under the sun. Come down to verse number 9 with me. Verse 9, he says, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. That which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Look down to verse 14 with me. I've seen all the works that are done under the sun. Let me just pause right here and put a shameless plug in for my King James Bible. Do you notice the poetical cadence that we've heard? Done under the sun. There is not an English teacher or a teacher for that fact in school on the face of the planet that doesn't understand the best way to help children remember something or adults for that matter is put it in rhyme form. Every modern Bible version on the market from your New King James Bible to your English Standard Bible to your New Living Translation, your New International Version, American Standard Version, don't matter. They all ruin the poetical cadence of the King James Bible thereby making it harder to remember, memorize, and quote again. Now it's not by accident or chance tonight. Look down, if you would, to chapter 2 with me. Look at chapter 2 and verse number 11. Solomon says in chapter 2, verse 11, Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. All was vanity and vexation of spirit, and there was no profit under the sun. Verse 17, he says the phrase, under the sun. Verse 18 of chapter 2, he says the phrase, under the sun. Verse 19, under the sun. Verse 20, under the sun. Verse 22, under the sun. And several other various and sundry times throughout the rest of the book where he'll say that phrase again and again, under the sun. It is evident uh, to me tonight that Solomon is a man who has gotten totally fixated on life under the sun. I, I don't know what you believe about this. I'll tell you what I believe. I believe the book of Ecclesiastes is a stark and shocking contrast to that of the book prior to it, the book of Proverbs. If you read the book of Proverbs and the 31 chapters therein and immediately go out of that and into the 12 chapters of Ecclesiastes, you would almost swear there is no way that it is the same guy that wrote these two books. If you read them back to back, you'd think there's no way that, that the authorship of these two books came from the same hand or from the same mind or from the same pen. It's like it is two totally different individuals. There's no way that the man in Proverbs that speaks of the wisdom of the wise, the folly of fools, how it pays to serve God, how God rewards and blesses the righteous. And he says things like there's a reward for the righteous and how living for God pays off in life. There's no way that that man can be the same man that then when you get to Ecclesiastes says things like he says in chapter 2 verse 15 and 16 where he says the wise man and the fool die alike. In other words, he gets to Ecclesiastes and says, what's the matter if you're a wise man? What's the matter if you're a fool? You're all dying anyway, so it really just doesn't matter. 
But it's the same guy. You say, well, how's that possible, preacher? Because the book of Proverbs is written early in the reign and in the life of Solomon when his heart is young and tender, when his heart is still pointed towards the God of his father, David. He writes the book of Proverbs early in his reign and rulership as king when he was asking God for wisdom and discernment to lead God's people and he was worshiping at the temple with hands upstretched and fires coming down and clouds are filling the temple and he's walking with God and God is walking with him and he's got his focus in the right place in his life so he's saying the right things in the book of Proverbs but when we get to the book of Ecclesiastes it's no longer the young man Solomon that was walking with God so closely the book of Ecclesiastes is the old man Solomon and according to 1 Kings chapter 11 Solomon loved many strange women and Solomon had all these wives and concubines and it says his wives and his concubines turned his heart his heart got cold and his heart got indifferent towards the things of God and instead of focusing on things where the Lord is he got totally focused on things that are done on this planet under the sun tonight you say preacher do you believe Ecclesiastes is God inspired Holy Ghost breathed scripture absolutely you say so what is Ecclesiastes it is God letting us get a mindset and a look into a backslidden Christian a backslidden child of God and just how far out you can get in your mindset if you don't keep the Lord as the main thing tonight can I say to you if you get your life totally wrapped up on things under the sun you're going to be just as depressed just as discouraged just as defeated as Solomon was in the book of Ecclesiastes uh, brother if you get your whole life wrapped up in money get your whole life wrapped up in houses and lands and cars and things get your whole life wrapped up in stuff down here and entertainment and life down here you will end up one more depressed backslidden discouraged Christian tonight just like Solomon did so tonight for a few minutes I'd like to preach on this now the title is not going to make a lot of sense to you until we get to the New Testament here in a few minutes but we're going to stretch our legs and preach on Ecclesiastes for a bit until we hit that text and, and give you the last little thought we're going to give you but tonight I want to preach on this thought in your hearing living life above the sun living life not under the sun living life above the sun tonight see Solomon starts getting so fixated preacher Foster on things under the sun and it's all discouraging and depressing everything he sees under the sun it's depressing it's discouraging Solomon writes 11 chapters of nothing but dragging us down into the despondency and the filth of this world he finally gets to chapter 12 and he says you know what remember now the creator in the days of thy youth while the evil days come not though the years draw nigh when thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them and he gets to the end of the thing and he says let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter God's going to bring everything into judgment the good and the evil but brother it's not like he really pulls us back up it doesn't change what he's already said in the previous 11 chapters tonight what does Solomon see under the sun that so discourages him and rightfully so let me say this firstly he sees there's nothing different under the sun nothing different under the sun look at chapter 1 verse 9 chapter 1 verse 9 watch what he says the thing that hath been it is that which shall be that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun Solomon says this world keeps telling me here's something new you got to have this and Solomon said I tried the new thing that they were offering but when I got the new thing it was just like the old new thing that they said I needed and after I got the new new thing I realized it's like the old new thing and then they come out with a new 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 thing and they said you need this new thing to replace this new thing that we said you needed so I grabbed a hold of the new new thing and I found the new new thing was just like the old two new things and nothing brought me joy and nothing brought me fulfillment and nothing brought me satisfaction can I say that's the way the world does things the world constantly tells you you got to have this new thing got to have this new thing well what's different between that and the old thing nothing 
but it's the new thing and you've got to have it. You, you, you got to take a loan out to get it. You got to go into Hawk and run your credit cards up and make sure you get the new thing so that you can be looked at like you own the in crowd and you in style. I mean, have y'all noticed how people are freaking out now that over these things right here? As soon as as soon as the newest, newest, I know some people that as soon as the new iPhone 18, 19, Z24 Pro Max comes out, I don't even know what number we own now. I still got the up and down vertical one camera phone. Won't even hardly hold a charge. I charge it all night, start talking all in the morning, and half my battery is dead. It's time to go get a new one just because this one's about to die. But I know some people, when the new one comes out, they trade their old one in to get the new one and pay big money to get it. Why? It ain't because they need it. But they told you it's new, so I got to have it. And when they get it, you know what you find out? It's just like the old one that you had. There ain't no new thing under the sun. Let me tell all you young people something. The world will look at you and say, you need to try this drug. This is new and you need to get a hold of this. You need to try this alcohol. Or you need to try this. Take a joint, take a toke, and you'll get that. You know what you'll find? It doesn't provide satisfaction for long. So then you have to get the next new thing. And then it don't provide satisfaction for long. Then you get the next new thing. And the world will constantly make you chase different things under the sun. But it's all the same deal. It's all the same deal. There's nothing different under the sun. Have y'all noticed how even clothes and fads run around like this? Have y'all noticed bell bottoms have come back? <laughs> I mean, some of you 60s flower people, did you ever think 60s was going to come back? It's back! <laughs> Should have held on to all your clothes from the 60s. It's back. <laughs> Them pictures 20 years ago that your kids looked at and laughed at you, now they're wearing the same clothes. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing different. And you're going to wind up chasing stuff all your life to find out it's one new thing after another thing. Oh, you've got to have this. Why? Just like the old thing. He said there's nothing different under the sun. Another difference. They say, oh, global warming is going to kill us all. This is the new thing going to kill us. It ain't, brother, that ain't no new thing about that. that now, they can't call it global warming no more. They call it climate change. <laughs> you know why they stop calling it global warming? They call it climate change. So that any change in the weather, they can say, see, this is new. It ain't new. We've had hot, cold winter, spring, summer, or fall since the beginning. It'll always be that way. Weather's always changing. <laughs> no new thing. Nothing different under the sun. He said not only is there no nothing different under the sun, he said there's no dividends under the sun. No dividends. Watch what he said in chapter 2, verse 10. Chapter 2, verse 10, watch what he says. No dividends under the sun. Whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. This was my portion of all my labor. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on all the labor that I labored to do, and behold, all was vanity, vexation of spirit. Watch it, no dividends. And there was no profit under the sun. Solomon said, I've worked my fingers to the bone. I get down to the end of it. What good did it do me? Nothing. Ain't no dividends down here. Have you? I mean, this is a terrible thing. Have you watched the vicious cycle of life? I have seen this happen so many times. You work for the man for 60, 65 years, work yourself crazy, and then finally when you get down to the end where you can retire and enjoy life a little bit, then all of a sudden the doctor tells you you got some incurable disease, and bam, you didn't even get to enjoy it. Say, <laughs> so that's terrible. That's life. I've watched that happen so many times I can't even tell you. Say, should we stop working? No, I'm not telling you that. I'm just telling you if that's all you putting your eggs all in that basket, you're going to end up being disappointed. Working all your life to get the retirement home, to get the 401k, to get this. And you know what people find out working all their life for that? They end up finding out it didn't profit me. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and he loses his own soul? 
Jesus looked at that man over in the book of Luke and he said about that man in the book of Luke he said the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully and he said I, I have much goods laid up for many years I'll tear down my old barns and build bigger barns I say to my soul so thou hast much goods laid up for many years take thine ease eat drink and be merry and the Lord said this thou fool this night shall thy soul be required of thee then how you shoot shall these things be which thou hast gained so is everyone that's rich in this world and not rich towards God God this evening. Here, here a few months ago, back last year, our church um, bought me and my family for our uh, pastor appreciation a trip to go to a place I've always kind of wanted to go. Every time I'm coming this way or going anywhere on meeting this way, I always pass right by it in Asheville. That's the Biltmore House and the Biltmore Mansion. How many of y'all ever been to the Biltmore Mansion before? It's worth going and seeing if you ain't there been. It is still, it is still the largest house in the United States of America still the biggest house in the United States of America way back up yonder in the woods man you get back there and you drive that drive about two or three miles up through the woods and finally get back there that huge palatial estate built built by the Vanderbilt family up in there man we got there we walked through that whole thing and seen all the stables and the rose gardens and the servant quarters and the guest rooms and the billiard rooms and the ballrooms and the dining rooms and all this stuff man and if it wasn't a guided tour we'd have got lost in the place and I mean it's just, it just goes on on and on and on and on and a bowling room and pool uh, to swim in. I mean, just on and on. And at the end of it, I wanted to know, how come the dude built this? Yeah. There but so many rooms your man can live in. What did he build this for? This literally was it. Brother Jordan, this is the only reason he built it. This is what he said when you got down there in the bottom and reading about the construction and all of it. Basically, this is what it boiled down to. He wanted to be able to put his fingers in his proverbial suspender straps and say, I got something ain't nobody else got. <laughs> God bless you. Way to go. You died and went to hell just like your family did. Yeah, what good that do you? What was the dividends of this? Work and left this whole big monument. Now nobody even lives in the house. What good did it do you? Their family lived up in New York and they said that the wives of the husbands, they would constantly one-up one another. One of them would build and add on to their penthouse on the street corner and as soon as they would, the wife across town would get mad and hear about it. She'd tear down what she had just built, spend millions of dollars to build something bigger. And as soon as the sister-in-law over there heard about it, she'd tear hers down and rebuild again. Just And they constantly fighting back and forth. There ain't no dividends in this stuff. It didn't profit at all. No dividends. No, no, nothing different. He said there's no delight under the sun. Look, look at chapter 2 verse 17. You got to see this. Well, let's back up to verse number 4. Look at chapter 2 verse 4. I want you to see what all he's got. He said there's no delight in this stuff. Watch what he said in chapter 2 verse 4. He said, chapter 2, verse 4, I made me great works, I built me houses, I planted me vineyards, I made me gardens and orchards, and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. I made me pools of water to water therewith, the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens, and had servants born in my house. Also I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver, gold, the peculiar treasure of kings, and of the provinces I got me men singers, women singers, the delight of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts so was I great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem also my wisdom remained in me and whatsoever mine eyes desired I kept not from them now y'all everything he says he's got that's what the world tells you all that you've got to have to be happy to put a smile on your face to put a song on your lips to give joy in your heart the world tells everybody in this room all of that stuff will make life work Earth living. But watch what he says in verse 17. Watch verse 17. Therefore, I hate my life. I hated life. Because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all his vanity. He's got everything the world says, brother Christian, we got to have to make us happy. And at the end of it, he says, I hate my life. I've got it all, and I hate living. What is it about these entertainment stars, music stars, movie stars, that we end up finding out they take a handful of pills and overdose? 
hanged herself, blowed her brains out after they've got it all. What's, what's going on with that stuff? You've reached the pinnacle, Elvis. Elvis, you reached the pinnacle. You should be happy, not dying of an overdose. Robin Williams, you're the funniest guy on the planet, and everybody knows your name. You should be happy, not hanging yourself in your house. Whitney Houston, you got a voice that can bring the house down and sing like nobody's business. You are not to be killing yourself. You've got everything the world says you need to make you happy, but you hate your life. Why? It's all under the sun. You want, you, here, you, you, want a, you want a quick title for a short message? How to hate your life. You want a life that you hate? Here's how to have a life that you hate. Make your whole life about the here and now. Getting everything you can get and living life for right here. You, that's a surefire way to hate your life. Oh, yeah. You say, preacher, this is quite possibly the most depressing message that I've ever heard. Yeah. You know why? We're talking about under the sun. This is the problem in a lot of churches today. We've made under the sun look good. And people don't understand why they're depressed and have to stay on antidepressants because they live in their life looking at nothing about but what's under the sun. <laughs> what is it about all these stars? I'll tell you, you want to know a real fascinating study to do? Just to, all you, you know, Gen Z and Xers or whatever we are. Do a Google search on how many famous people have to take sleeping pills and, and sleeping narcotics to go to sleep at night because they can't sleep. Almost all of them. The Bible said he giveth his beloved sleep. Why is it that all these people that's got all this stuff have to have help going to sleep? You telling me their conscience ain't good? What's, what's, what's going on that they can't sleep? We see not only is there nothing different under the sun, there's no dividends under the sun, there's no delight under the sun. We see people don't get what they deserve under the sun. Look at chapter 3, verse 16. Don't miss this. This, this is America if I've ever seen it. Chapter 3, verse 16. Watch what he says. Moreover, I saw under the sun the place of judgment. This is the court system in Solomon's day. The place of judgment. And watch what he says. Wickedness was there. And the place of righteousness. That's supposed to be the church. That iniquity was there. You know what essentially what he's saying? Nobody's getting what they deserve. Matter of fact, Solomon says later on, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Do y'all realize this world, people ain't getting what they deserve today? Let me just say this for all you QAnon people that might be sitting among us tonight. I read all the conspiracy stuff just like you do. And son, back when Donald Trump got, you know, shafted out of that election in 2020, sorry, that's probably going to get you flagged on the internet. But anyway, got shafted out of that election with the pandemic and all that, uh, you know, nefarious voting in the 2020 election. Come on, y'all, let's just be honest. If you really believe that that bumbling blockhead named Biden and Kamala, if you really believe they are the duly elected officials of this country, you have your head so far down a hole in the saying you can't see the light of day. There's absolutely no hope for you. You're a brainless, mindless simp this evening. You have no hope for you. Anyways, I got wrapped up in that stuff and here's what they kept saying. Just any day now, just hang on. The, 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 the lights have been going on and off in the White House. Something's happening. Tunnels under the White House where they're keeping all the children and they're agreeing to General Chrome and they're going to get all of them. And just wait one more day and they're going to come out with the manifest list from the Lolita Express and, and Epstein Island and they're going to oust all of them. They're going to perp walk Hillary and perp walk Clinton and perp walk Obama and perp walk Biden and all of them right out and just show them what they're going to be. Just one more day. Hang on, hang on. Let me give y'all a news flash. If you're waiting on the Epstein list to come out and convict everybody, if you're waiting on Trump to get reinstated and Biden to be ousted and all of it to be exposed. Let, spoiler alert! It ain't happening. You say why? People don't get what they deserve under the sun. The kingdoms of this world right now are not the kingdoms of our Lord and His Christ. They're run by the devil. And if you constantly get yourself neck deep worried about, I mean, every night watching Tucker and Hannity and sitting on the edge of your seat and getting all jacked up and worked up, think, when they going to get them? When they going to get them? Spoiler alert! It ain't happening. 
People don't get what they deserve under the sun. <laughs> Brother, have you, have, have you watched? I thank God for law enforcement like Brother Christian and them here tonight, but I'm talking about the higher-ups in the courts and the higher-ups at the federal level and what's governing this country. If you think people's getting what they deserve, you've lost your mind. <laughs> We, we, we are what Lester Roloff said 40 years ago. We're an insane asylum run by the inmates. Watch these people on the TV cuss God and call God a her and claim God's a transgender and use his name in vain and mock him and act like Jesus Christ was a homosexual. And I sit there and get fired up thinking, God, why don't you do something when something going to happen on this? That's under the sun, y'all. Can I give you one more under the sun before I try and pick us up? We see there's no defender under the sun. Look at chapter 4, verse 1. Chapter 4, verse 1, no defender. So I returned. This might quite possibly be one of the saddest verses in all the Bible. So I returned and considered all the oppressions that are done under the sun. And behold, the tears of such as were oppressed. And watch what it says about these poor people that are oppressed. And they had no comforter. And on the side of their oppressors there was power. But they had no comforter. These people are oppressed, Brother James. These people are crying. These people are broken hearted. These people need help. And there is no one to dry their tears in the midnight hour. There is no one to say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. There is no one to be on the inside through the trial. They got nobody. Solomon said, that's what's under the sun. No wonder this dude's so depressed. His whole life got focused, Brother Isaac, right here. It's all he got to looking at under the sun. Would you do me a favor and we'll run to the close. Go with me to the book of Colossians tonight in chapter 3. As a child of God, we are not called to live our life under the sun. Even though we walk under the sun and breathe under the sun, we don't move and live and breathe and have our being under the sun. <laughs> uh, brother, we are called to be people of another world. Even though we live in this world tonight, we in the world, but we ain't of the world this evening. Watch what he said in Colossians chapter 3, verse number 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above the sun. Seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Yes, we live down here, but we ain't controlled by what's down here. Our life's up yonder somewhere. Our life's in the third heaven tonight where the Lord's at this evening. We're to live our life here like we're up there tonight. Verse 2, set your affection on things above, not on things under the sun, not on things on the earth, for you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. I love, I love verse 4, watch it. When Christ, watch what he calls Jesus, who is our life. Y'all, can I say Jesus Christ ain't just an add-on to my life? He's not just like some sort of accessory to my life. He's not something that one day I realized, you know, I need a little help with my life. So I need somebody to kind of add on to my already pretty good life. No, my life was going nowhere and fast. I was going to hell without hope, without God. And the life moved into me. He is my song. He is my joy. He is my peace. He is what gets me up in the morning. He is what gives me satisfaction. He is my life. You may work a job, but that ought not to be your life. You got to make a living, but that ought not to be your life. Uh, you got to raise children, but that ought not to be your life. Our life is Jesus. Our life ain't here. Our life's out there. He said, When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. So I'm preaching on living life above the sun. You know what some of y'all so all the time? Uh, you, this is your Christian life, some of y'all. You know why it's like that? Because you're letting things under the sun control it. Because this life constantly is changing. 
But y'all, that Bible said, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. But my anchor ain't down here, Brother Lancaster. He said both sure and steadfast. And that which entereth to within the veil, whither the forerunner, even Christ, is now entered for us. My hope ain't down here. My hope's out yonder. Let the world go crazy. Let the world go nuts. Let the Bidens and the Clintons have it. I'm going to preach the Bible, live for Jesus, and my life ain't wrapped up in the United States. It ain't wrapped up in this mud ball. It's burning up with fervent heat one day anyways. My life's wrapped up above the sun. And so I just want to give you this, and I'm done. Just want to give you this real quick, and I'm done. Everything I told you, <laughs> everything I told you under the sun, don't miss this, is totally reversed above the sun. Everything that's depressing and discouraging under the sun is glorious above the sun. I told you Solomon said there's nothing different, Brother R.C., under the sun. No new thing. Isn't that what he said? He said there was no new thing under the sun. I ain't the way it is above the sun. Brother, there's something come from above the sun. We got a New Testament. We're a new creature in Christ. We're a new man. We got a new covenant. We got a new and living way. We have a new name written in glory. There's coming a new heaven and a new earth. We're to sing a new song one day. We got a new Jerusalem we're going to live in. And Jesus said, Behold, I make all things new. And the Bible said he hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Uh, that Bible said if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Oh, you say, where can I get something new? i tell you where you get something new. It ain't down here. You're going to have to get something from the other side of the sun. <laughs> Old Jeremiah's all tore up. Jeremiah's all upset and aggravated and rightfully so. Preaches for 40 years and no converts. Got no friends. Focused on everything under the sun. And the only thing in Jeremiah's life that barely brought him up a little bit, Brother Ernie, is in Lamentations chapter 3. It is of the Lord's mercies that were not consumed, for his compassions fail not. They are new. Sister, you want something new? Wish my husband give me something new. I wish I wish I had something new. I wish I had new. I'll tell you, you want something new? God give you something new this morning. You just didn't recognize it because we're spoiled rotten brats. God gave you something new every single day of your life. And the reason why none of us realize it, from the men to the women's, because we're all spoiled rotten children of God. Because God's been so good to us, we don't even recognize his blessings no more. Every day of your life, you get something new. His mercies fail not, his compassion fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. When you woke up this morning, something new had already been deposited in your life. When you woke up this morning, God already gave you something new. He gave you new compassion for that day and new mercy for that day and new grace for that day. We get new stuff every day. I love, I love uh, y'all bear with me this might be the most spiritual thing I talk about tonight I love the University of Georgia Bulldogs <laughs> hallelujah don't leave don't leave this is going to be good you need to go to the altar on this right here <laughs> back to back national champions in football soon to be a three-peat brother Jordan on the way me and my oldest daughter, I had enough air miles accrued on my credit card that I had two free round trip tickets. And in January, when they was playing TCU out yonder in L.A., I said, Esther, on the weekend right before the game, I said, you want to go? She's about the only one in the family that likes the stuff like I do. I said, you want to go? She said, let's do it. We hopped a plane, flew out there the day of the game. On the Monday of the game, flew out there and got there just in time to run to the stadium and watch the dogs put a shellacking on the Texas Christian University Horned Frogs, 65 to 7. Y'all whiz up in that place, and every time they'd score a touchdown, I mean, all 65 points, we'd shout, and I was picking her up with, ah! Ah! You just, I, don't, I don't watch football with many people because I don't understand how I am. I, I don't sit down much. I holler a lot. It's just as. But here about, here about a month ago, I was at the house, 
And on the SEC Network channel, it said national championship. They was playing the game over again, Brother Jesse. And I thought, well, I'll watch it again. And I sat there, and, and I watched the whole thing. They'd score a touchdown, and I said, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I didn't notice that last time. But there was no, whoa! I mean, every time they scored a month ago, I wasn't running around, hey, touchdown! Dog scored again! No, I mean, I, I already knew what happened. It's not new. It's not new. It's old. It ain't new no more. Got to have something new to go on now. But y'all, we come up in here tonight, and that brother right there, no, right there, you were swapped on me here. That bald guy there and the bald guy there, but this... <laughs> This bald guy's slightly older than that bald guy. There's actually two bald guys right here. It's this one over here, praise God. And then there's one over there. And God, hey, God only made a few perfect heads in the world. He put hair on the rest of them, fellas. Amen. <laughs> that brother right there stood up and he got to singing, Down at the cross where my Savior died. Y'all have heard that song hundreds of times. It ain't new. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times we've sung that song at our church and I've sung it across the country. But y'all, yeah, we got to singing it and something inside said, Hallelujah. Well, glory. There ain't one song sung tonight except that when that sister sung and I like that one too. That was sung tonight that I ain't heard at least a half a dozen times or more and it still does something for me. You say why? Because that's something that God gives. That's something new from the other side of the sun. There's something different on the other side of the sun. He said there's no dividends under the sun. Remember what Solomon said? Solomon said ain't no dividends, no profit. That ain't what my Bible said. My Bible said be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not, is not, is not in vain in the Lord. Hey, 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 if you live in your life for this right here, your labor's in vain. You get your reward in the here and now. But if you're living your life for above the sun, y'all, there's a reward coming. There's a dividend coming. There's a crown coming. There's a rulership place coming. There's a good, well done, good and faithful servant coming. There is dividends above the sun. Preacher, you may never see dividends down here. Preacher, you may never see dividends down here. Oh, but one day we're getting over yonder. Yeah. There's going to be some dividends over there. Yeah. Christian, you may serve God 40 years down here and think nobody cares. Oh, you're going to find out one day there was somebody that said that wasn't in vain. You taught that Sunday school class. You sung in the choir. You cleaned the church. You witnessed to somebody. You passed out a track. You tried to live for Jesus. That wasn't in vain. There's dividends over there. Yeah. He said there's no delight under the sun. And that what he said? He said, I hated my life. Got all this stuff and I hate my life. That still always blows my mind. He got it all and he hates life. And yet in the New Testament, in Acts chapter 26, we find the Apostle Paul's on trial being a preacher of the gospel. And the Bible says they're going to put him on the stand. They're going to let him stand up before King Agrippa and his wife Bernice. And they're going to come in. The Bible said, there in Acts 25, leading into Acts 26, it said that they came in, Agrippa came in to the judgment place with great pomp. In other words, the halls were lined, you know, all the presidential colors was flying, and the presidential band was playing. All hail King Agrippa. And Agrippa comes walking in. He's... It's the State of the Union, man. I mean, they're putting a dog on. And he walks up there and sits down. And everybody's having a big time. And they say, bring in the accused. And here comes walking in this little diminutive, hunchback, bad eyesight, scarred up, dirty, chained up, hand and foot Jew named Paul. He ain't, y'all listen to me, he ain't got nothing that Solomon talked about that he had in Ecclesiastes 2. He ain't got men singers or women singers. He ain't got houses. He ain't got horses. He ain't got nothing. He got nothing. He ain't got no friends. He said, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. He ain't got no permit nobody to go as bail or hang with him. And they broke him in, and Paul stands there in old dirty prison clothes, 
chains on his hands and on his feet and he looks at Agrippa read it for yourself Acts 26 2 and I quote Agrippa said thou art permitted to speak for thyself and the fellow that ain't got nothing looks at Agrippa and says I think myself happy King Agrippa <laughs> what you happy you ain't got a bank account you ain't got a dollar bill you ain't got a horse waiting on you ain't got a house everybody's forsaking you all alone and yet you're gonna stand here for all these people that want you dead and say you know what I'm a happy 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 fella I'm a pretty happy guy I mean you know to live as Christ and to die as gain whatsoever state I am therewith to be content I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me I rejoice evermore and pray without ceasing I'm, I'm in, I, I know how to abase and abound I'm enjoying myself just as good right here in chains and in rags as I would down the five star Hilton I'm doing pretty good King Agrippa you say what's that that's a man who ain't living life down here that's a man living life over there see here's the facts here's the facts and here's the problem with us as American Christians if we had been stripped down to what Paul was stripped down to we would be of all men most miserable we'd hang our lip out we'd act like our best dog just died we'd be mad and upset at God and shaking our fist that's cause our life's wrapped up right here our life's wrapped up in clothes and comfort and air conditioning and heating and padding and cars and houses now I'm not saying there's something wrong with having that but our problem in America is we become Laodicea we don't have it it's got us and now we've just gotten comfortable at ease inside when we should be living our life above the sun and saying God that's my life that's what I'm living for that's what makes me happy that's what gives me joy that's what gives me peace you want to live a happy, delightful life? Set your affection on things above. Stop this under the sun business. He said they don't get what they deserve under the sun. And that what he said? Place of judgment. They don't get what they deserve. That ain't what happens above the sun. Hey, y'all don't get all ticked off and wiped out over the Bidens or the Clintons or the... Or, or, or the Vladimir Putins or the Zelenskys or the transgenders or the abortion doctors don't get all torqued off just I mean just I absolutely lost your mind Revelation 20 I saw a great white throne and he that sat upon him from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and the books was open another book was open which is the book of life and the devil judged out of things written in those books and that book said whosoever is not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire y'all there's coming a day when God's keeping good records and it's all going to be brought out in the light yeah they're going to get what they deserve but not under the sun it's above the sun can I give you this and I'm done? He said there was no defender under the sun. <laughs> That's Old Testament theology. Old Testament theology said they didn't have no defender. Brother, that ain't the way it is on this side of Calvary. Y'all, I'm teaching right now in Sunday school through the book of the Acts. And when we get to Acts chapter 1, Jesus said, you tarry right here and wait for the promise of the Father. He's going to send the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. And brother, in Acts chapter number 2, when the day of Pentecost is fully come, there come a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and the Comforter has come. The Comforter has come. Y'all, I'm not laying around by myself, uh, weeping myself to sleep at night with no one to help me and no one to dry my tears. When my heart breaks and when I don't know what to do, there is somebody that I'm sealed with unto the day of redemption when I don't even know how to pray when I don't even know how to articulate the hurt and the pain there's a spirit on the inside that cries Abba Father and he prays for me when I can't pray for myself you say where'd you get that from it come from the other side of the sun it's something not from here but out yonder this evening so what is all this preaching about you done for the last 45, 50 minutes? What, what, are you, what are you trying to tell us, preacher? I'm trying to tell us stop living our life under the sun. Good. 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 Say, I want to have a happy Christian life. All right. Start living it out yonder. Not down here. I've heard this all my life, preacher Foster. I've heard people say things like this. I've heard people say stuff about Christians. I'll say, well, they're so heavenly minded. They're no earthly good. Can I just be honest with you? I've never met a Christian like that. The Christians that I always meet, we are all so earthly minded, 
we're no heavenly good. That's our problem. I ain't sure there's been very many Christians that God ever had to rebuke and say, you're too heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. No, no, no. What I find in the last days, perilous times shall come, men shall be lovers of them own selves. In the last days, we ain't got to worry about loving God too much. We got to worry about loving ourselves less. Have you noticed today all the preaching, even in a lot of our independent Baptist churches? I love you, Pastor. We so like mine. We was talking today about this kind of stuff. Have you noticed how much of your preaching today in even independent Baptist churches is all about loving self, self-help, self-betterment, self, self, self. I'm so sick of self-preaching. I can't hardly stand it. Self-preaching will get you where Solomon was at. Yeah, it'll get you where Solomon... I'll tell you where else it'll get you. It'll get you where Job was. You know where we get to at the end of Job? At the end of Job, Job finally gets to the place. He says, I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Job got to look at himself and he said, I ain't good, I'm wicked as a devil. You know what finally gave Job some victory and joy? When he saw who God was and saw who he was. I'm just saying tonight, stop looking at everything under the sun and letting it suck your joy out of your life. It's draining your joy. It's draining your ability to walk with God and live for the Lord. Start living life above the sun. Don't let all this stuff down here affect us in such ways where it totally wipes us out. To where one service we come in and we're, woo! And the next service we come in and we're, I've watched people like that from between Sunday morning and Sunday night. I've literally, but Sammy, I've literally watched people. Sunday morning they come in, I mean, shouting a victory, and by the time they come back five hours later on Sunday night, they look like, I mean, somebody just gut shot them. Like, how is this possible? I can't live on such an emotional roller coaster like that. I got to plane out a little bit. How do you live that life where you plane out some and the high, you know, you just don't take these huge dips. You live life above the sun. Lancasters, would you help me up here? Old Solomon. Old Solomon got totally fixated here. And he was a depressed individual by the time he died. But old Paul got totally fixated out there. And that man walked to the gas. <laughs> I love 2 Timothy. I'm teaching through it in our Ben's Bible Institute. In 2 Timothy, old Paul gets to the end of his life, and he says, I'm now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge give me that day, not to be only, but all them also love us. I mean, Paul's like, hey, hey, woohoo! The dying words of Paul is not the same as the dying words of Solomon. The man dying in the palace is a depressed, hollow shell of a sunken man who wasted the last part of his life. And the man who puts his neck down on Nero's chopping block, he's a rejoicing, triumphant, glad, spirit-filled saint that goes to heaven ready. What's the difference? One's living life this way. And one's living life this way. Say, preacher, you, what, I mean, what are you saying? Quit our jobs? Quit? No. I mean, there's enough Bible talks about what you should do. How you're supposed, what kind of father, mother, employee, Christian you're supposed to be. But just because you live in life and have to here don't mean you got to exclude that. Living life above the sun. Why don't we ask the Lord to help us tonight to live our lives above the sun. Father, let's all stand tonight. We ask you to help us this evening. Thank you for your word. God, this so challenges me because I find myself in the trap of Solomon. I find myself in that spot so many times battling and fighting against getting my mind and my heart so wrapped up in temporal things that I forget about spiritual and eternal things. I don't want to get to that place. God, help us to make an impact in this world through the power of God while we're here, but always keeping our mind on the fact that we are citizens of another country. Help us to live our life above the sun. In Jesus' name.
If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.